Welcome. Today's Thursday, May 25th. I'm Jeff Hughes, Chief Investment Officer at JWH Investment Partners and the founder of Alpha Insights. And this is your Daily Five. Daily Five is the show where we look at five charts that we think are really important for the market. And uh, before we start, I just want to remind everybody uh, that the next issue of Huge Insights, The Big Picture, issue 22, will be published on Saturday, June 3rd. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, uh, we do publish a monthly newsletter. Uh, it's an investment newsletter that's available on Substack. It's free to subscribe and it's delivered directly to your email on the first Saturday of each month. Uh, the newsletter is affectionately titled Huge Insights, The Big Picture, and therein we discuss the key macro factors affecting the economy and the markets. For those who want more, there's also an option to upgrade to paid for as little as $12 a month. That includes our monthly market forecast as well as uh, positioning recommendations. And uh, paid subscribers also receive our weekly Alpha Insights Idea Generator publication, which details our top actionable trade idea and provides updated market commentary every Wednesday. In addition, you also get privileged access to periodic interim bulletin reports and quarterly video content. Uh, you can find that on hugeinsights.substack.com if you're interested. Um, let's start with chart number one. Chart number one um, uh, evaluates some intramarket non confirmations that have become evident. You know, today's new high in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, remains unconfirmed by the two senior indexes, the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And, you know, we're looking at the NASDAQ because the NASDAQ really has been the leader, and in particular, the NASDAQ 100. And to be very specific, seven stocks that dominate the NASDAQ 100 and account for greater than 50% of its market cap. Importantly, as was the case on May 22nd, um, the NASDAQ 100's High remains unconfirmed by the four broadest measures of the U.S. stock market, the Wilshire 5000, the Russell 3000, the Dow Jones Composite, which includes the industrials, the transports, and the utilities, as well as the value line arithmetic indexes, all of which remain below their February 2nd closing highs. Now, intermarket non-confirmations of this nature speak to the narrowness uh, of leadership within the market. Um, and historically, it is a bearish condition that very often precedes important trend reversals. There's an old trader's maxim, and it goes something like this. When the infantry is in retreat, the generals suffer defeat. And the generals are really the only stocks that are leading the way. And that's been led not just by NVIDIA today, but by Apple and Microsoft and Meta and Google and Amazon um, and Tesla, to name those seven. Um, one fact that I think is important and shouldn't be ignored is, is that Apple today represents 7.4% of the S&P 500's market cap. That is the highest level that a single stock has represented uh, in the history of the market, greater than IBM back in the 1980s. And we know what happened to IBM eventually. It was, uh, you know, basically... Um, or, you know, became an also ran within uh, the market. Um, the final thing I'd point out is that Apple's market cap today exceeds the entire market cap of the Russell 2000. So, you know, I think we just shouldn't ignore the fact that things have gotten a little bit stretched here. Having said that, let's look at chart number two. Not only is the NASDAQ, um, you know, diverging negatively versus the broad market, but there are some internal weaknesses developing as well. And as this chart illustrates, um, the internal weaknesses exist within the broader NASDAQ composite. Uh, the May 22nd recovery high in the NASDAQ comp has now been attended by far fewer net advancing issues than its, uh, than its February high. And that's using the NASDAQ cumulative advanced decline line, uh, which is really plumbing its lows, frankly. And indeed, the net number of NASDAQ stocks making new highs back on May 22nd has also decreased dramatically when compared to the February high. So, you know, this is not only true in the NASDAQ, but in the broader market as well. And it is a characteristic that is antithetical to the notion of an emerging new bull market. Now, negative divergences of this nature are bearish indications, and they very often precede a major trend reversal. 
as was the case back in November of 2021 at the NASDAQ's all-time high, albeit that divergence was, was significantly longer than the current divergence. We are at a lower degree of trend right now, so that is something that would be expected. Let's look at chart number three. Chart number three is an analog, and I don't often use analogs, but I think it's quite germane to the current environment. Here we're looking at the NASDAQ 100 back in 2000, at the period from January 1999 to August of 2000, versus the 2023 picture off the March 2020 low to present, okay? Now, there's no doubt that the circumstances today are different than the circumstances that existed back in uh, August of 2000. But in, in many ways, they are far worse, but we're not gonna go into those fundamentals because this is a show about technical analysis. And you know the current setup in the index today is, is quite similar to that that existed back in August of 2000, albeit at a much larger degree of trend. Now, in both cases, the indexes declined impulsively in five waves. You can see they're numbered one, two, three, four, five into their lows, right? And, and that is from their respective cycle peaks to end primary wave one down in this progression. Now, back in 2000, uh, the peak was cycle wave three. Today, back in the 2022, or, or I should say November of 2021, when the NASDAQ peaked, it was cycle wave five. So, so we are now in the midst of correcting a five wave advance, which should come in three waves, at least A, B, C, or perhaps a very large uh, 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 sort of impulsive decline to uh, end wave A. And that's what we're assuming is the case right now. Now, um, in 2000, we saw that the index uh, managed to actually retrace a Fibonacci 61.8% of the primary wave one decline uh, before uh, it, uh, it peaked. And today, the NASDAQ is actually retraced a little bit over 50% of primary wave one down. Now, we leave open the possibility that the NASDAQ could retrace 61.8% uh, which is a very high probability level, but we are at a prior fourth wave extreme, which is also a, a place that is, is very common for a terminal point. And, uh, you know, with the price action today on the back of um, blowout uh, guidance from NVIDIA, we are not surprised to see the NASDAQ up a couple of percent. But it's, it's not like the NASDAQ is, is poised to explode out of here. It's a very, very narrow advance, and it's really not being confirmed by any of the other indexes. So it leaves open uh, some concerns that perhaps we've already peaked in the NASDAQ uh, with today's high. But if we are looking for a move to the 618 retracement, that comes at NASDAQ 14,338. That's about another 3.5% upside from now. So the question you have to ask yourself is, uh, do you want to commit new capital for a 3.5% move? Uh, we think not. And, and here's why. Let's look at chart number four. Chart number four illustrates the four stages of a bubble. And there's no question that the mania that we saw in uh, from about... Uh, March of 2020 through uh, the 2021 peak or 2022 early uh, peak in the S&P 500 was very much a mania phase. And that's obvious because it was attended by so many of the same speculative characteristics uh, that have defined all past mania phases. And those include disruptive technology IPOs, SPACs, so they used to be called blind pools, uh, heavy option trading, uh, public enthusiasm uh, as noted by the meme stonks, uh, crypto, the new tulip bulbs, right? And, and of course, a total disregard for valuation, which, which led to you know, many famed professional investors underperforming the public. That is very characteristic of you know, kind of that, that mania phase. But of course, it ended badly in 2022 with a 38% peak to trough decline in the NASDAQ 100, about half the decline that we saw back in the uh, 2000 to 2002 collapse of the NASDAQ so far. And uh, there's no question in my mind that the entire decline was denied by the bulls, the bulls who attempted to buy every dip and all the way down 
uh, failed until alas in October as sentiment reached its nadir. The bulls anxiously piled back into tech stocks again, and, and thus their renewed enthusiasm over AI and, and everything else has, has rallied the markets back into a frenzied state. But you know, we believe that we've now reached that return to normal point where many investors are now looking for uh, looking across the chasm, saying, well, earnings are going to recover dramatically and the Fed stopped raising rates and, you know, they're going to start cutting and things are going to get back to normal. Well, that was never really normal. And all it really means is that there is a great deal of complacency building in the market right here. And that typically is where the the point of return to normal occurs. And, uh, you know, the only advice we have for you is, is caveat emptor, buyer beware. We've marked uh, where we think you are in this, in this return to normal phase, uh, in this blow off phase. And we think the next leg is to the downside. So let's take a look at our forecast. Chart number five uh, gives you a sense of our preferred Elliott way of count on the S&P 500. Last Thursday's price action in the S&P carried the index above the February 2nd high. Uh, we talked about this a couple of weeks ago when we identified an island reversal pattern back on uh, May 4th in the S&P. And we, we you know, posited at that point in time that there was a high probability that the market would carry to a new high and therefore would elevate our uh, top alternate count to preferred status. So that's where we are today. Basically, the only significance to the change in our count is related to degree of trend. And under the current rubric, the October 13th low now counts as the uh, end of primary wave one down and primary wave two up, which is a counter trend advance. We know that by the choppy overlapping nature of the count, uh, it's traced out what's known to technicians as a double zigzag uh, corrective waveform. We, we illustrate that as two ABC patterns with a WXY. Uh, the ABCs are bifurcated by an X wave, which is also an ABC. And even though we've we've actually uh, exceeded the point of uh, point A on uh, wave Y up of primary wave two, um, you know there's still a holdout possibility uh, that things can go higher. So while it's possible that this gap resistance zone that we've illustrated in the chart will contain the advance as we've marked it it's also still possible that the S&P could carry to that Fibonacci 618 retracement of primary wave one uh, you know, decline before primary wave two tops. Uh, we don't know which is going to occur, but we've identified a level, okay? And that level is S&P 4,039. And once prices break below that level, it would confirm that primary wave three down is underway. And so, you know, we kind of have to hold out the possibility for slightly higher highs until we see a break of that level. That being said, there is an active Montgomery cycle turn window uh, that is currently underway between May 19th and June 3rd. Uh, this could mark a top and begin a major trend reversal. So we need to be, you know, open-minded to that possibility, but regardless of when, whether, whether the market topped on May 19th or whether it's going to top higher on June 3rd or some other date in the future, regardless of that, once primary wave two tops, prices should reverse hard down to new bear market lows in a spectacular fashion. Um, our minimum downside target for primary wave three is S&P 2750. So with that, we are advising investors to remain patient to maximize cash reserves and minimize net equity exposure going into this primary wave three decline that we expect in the not too distant future. So that ends our presentation for today. If you'd like to follow up with us, you can check out our website at jwhinvestment.com or follow us on Twitter at alpha underscore insights, or more importantly, sign up for our newsletter at hugeinsights.substack.com. With that, I want to thank you for watching today and wish everybody good luck trading.